A couple of weeks ago, I was perusing the Reverb.com app, and I was specifically looking at the section called Just Listed. If you're not familiar with this part of Reverb, it is a place where the new listings are, things that have just been placed up for sale. And I find that it's a good place to find deals. You can find something for a really good price that maybe someone just put up moments ago and you can snag it before somebody else does. Now something here caught my eye. It was a gold Klon Centaur just listed for $1,100. Now if you know anything about Klons, this is a incredible deal. Typically right now those are going for I believe around six to seven thousand dollars and even upwards I think of eight and nine thousand dollars that you can see them listed for sale. So this was a ridiculous deal and I thought man I might need to jump on this. I took a quick look at the pictures, everything looked legit, and I even noticed that it was a low serial number, number 33. All the pictures were decent quality, the seller had five stars, and I thought, well, it's through Reverb, I'm gonna pay through PayPal, so I'm kind of doubly protected there. Why not? Let's see where this goes. After I purchased it and paid for it, I sent the seller a message. I said this, Hey, I just wanted to establish contact early since you don't have much feedback. Any additional history or info on this? Any idea when you will be able to ship? Thanks. I knew that this could potentially be a scam, so I wanted to go ahead and message the seller early on, just in case maybe it wasn't and they were just in a bind or didn't really know the value of this pedal. I had hoped that I would hear back from the seller immediately and they would say, yeah, here's some more info. I'll be shipping this out tomorrow. But of course, I didn't hear anything back immediately. So I started researching it. If you remember earlier, I said that this was number 33. And so I searched number 33, Gold Klon. And I actually found that this exact pedal had been sold late in the year of 2021 for almost $7,000, if I remember correctly. And that kind of told me that whoever has this pedal in real life probably knows that it's worth a little more than $1,100. So I immediately knew at that point, this is probably a scam. A quick aside here, guys, I'm editing this video and I went to go grab a screen capture of that old ad and I found something I didn't find the first time around. And that is a current listing on Reverb from a very trusted seller in New Jersey for the Gold Klon number 33. The seller has tons of feedback and seems super legitimate. Now, the funny thing is that the pictures in that listing are the same exact pictures that the scammer used in his listing of the one I tried to buy. That means he went on Reverb, pulled these pictures from one listing, and created a brand new listing to scam people. All right, let's get back to the main video. At this point, I also knew that it was probably going to take me a little while to get a refund. So I started that process. I requested a refund from the seller on Reverb and even tried to contact them saying, hey, if you're legit, then reach out to me. I'd love to complete this, but it seems like you might be a scammer. Next, I reached out to Reverb to ask what my next steps were. They told me to contact PayPal. I started a dispute on the transaction and PayPal let me know that they would contact the seller and give them 10 days to respond. If they didn't respond, then I would automatically get a refund. Now, this is where things get really interesting. The next morning when I woke up, I had an email from PayPal and it said that the seller had updated the shipping info with a tracking number. Now, when I saw this email, I thought, huh, maybe I am getting a gold claw now. Let's see. So I plugged in the tracking number and I got this. This piece of it made no sense to me. Now, I will tell you guys, I was out of town, so I wasn't at home, but when it said that it was delivered, I knew that there was no possible way. The seller's location was listed as Australia, and there is no possible way he could have gotten a pedal from Australia to my house in less than a day less than 24 hours, I think. Another weird thing about the tracking information is that it said that it had been shipped the day before I purchased it. How is that even possible? Now, to cover myself, because I was out of town, I did have a friend run by the house to see if there was anything there. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, well, maybe they shipped something, um, you know, and it got to my house that's not a package. Um, just something with tracking info so that they can enter that in, you know, as part of their scam. Maybe they have some way of sending that locally um, and it's just part of their whole deal. So 
I had my buddy Trigvi, who you might remember from a Noah Guthrie vlog. I had him run by the house. He lives in my neighborhood and there wasn't anything there other than my regular mail and packages. After having this info, I reached back out to PayPal. Again, it appears that it was shipped before the order was even made um, and then it hasn't been uh, received or anything like that. I just wanted to see where things were at and kind of touch base with you guys on it. Okay. I'm going to review your account. Okay. Uh, place it on a brief hold and I'll let you know what I see. Um, so what, what essentially, without me even looking at it, so uh -huh. if, if the seller has tracking information, we will investigate that tracking information. Uh-huh. The next morning, I had an email from PayPal. They said that my dispute had been denied. Oh, sh**. <laughs> PayPal let me know that the item had been delivered and because of this, that my dispute was being denied. Now, this is where I kind of started getting worried, to be honest. The whole tracking info thing was weird, but I knew that it wasn't legit. I knew that there were ways to prove that it wasn't legit, and so that didn't worry me too much. But this was worrisome for sure. So I reached back out to Reverb to say, hey, here's where things are at. What do I do? Can you guys refund me? What's my next step? Reverb was super helpful through this and they told me to reach back out to PayPal because they obviously didn't look at the details of this case and that it probably just got denied, um, you know, just because it said it had been delivered and they just let it go through that way. Now, this was over the weekend and I was also traveling back home. So I thought first thing Monday morning, I'll reach back out to them. I have your account pulled up here. How can I help? Great. Um, well, I had a dispute um, that got denied and I just need to see about mm -hmm. getting that um, situated. It seemed like the details just kind of got overlooked and it, it got denied rather rather quickly without much consideration. So I just need to follow up on that and... Oh, sure. Definitely. Let me help you out on this. And I see here that there's a tracking number. Maybe that's the reason why it got denied. Correct. Yeah, I, I was... While I'm checking. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So sorry. Yes, I was aware or I was told because they provided a tracking number and then it says it was delivered, that's why it got denied. But um, again, I think there's a lot of elements to this that just got ignored because of that. Mm, I see, I'm so sorry about that, but don't worry. Um, definitely, I can you know, do an investigation here. Once I was able to invalidate the tracking number and it was not delivered to your ship to address, I can overturn this case for you, okay? So check the tracking um it was delivered the 23rd of june however there's only city and state here um were you not able to receive this tracking well oh, no see that, that that's that's what i mean is the the tracking the elements of the tracking number like don't they don't make sense like the order was from somebody in australia mm -hmm. the item was shipped before yeah. i placed the order it said it got to my city three hours after I ordered it. Um, uh -huh. And uh -huh. like, uh -huh. it, it just, and, and the, 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 like I ordered this through reverb.com. Um, they have acknowledged that the uh -huh. seller is fraudulent. Um, I have, um, you know, I have correspondence with them telling me that the seller is fraudulent. No, actually, um, I can definitely tell um, that this tracking number is not valid. Uh, the transaction date was the 22nd. Your tracking number, it was shipped out the 21st of June. So definitely that doesn't check out. Um, don't worry. Sorry if this was overlooked, but I got you on this. Okay. Um, Thank you. Also, the dispute amount here was not accurate. Um, it, the, the, the transaction was $1,220.40, but the dispute amount doesn't have the 40 cents. I'll also have this, um, corrected. Okay. And, um, if you allow me a minute or two, I'll get back to you. My heart is beating so fast right now. This is the kind of thing where it's like, you know, it's a fraudulent thing, you know, it's a scam, but trying to prove it to someone who, you know, doesn't want to lose money like PayPal. Um, it just, you know, 
you never know until you see that money back in your account. Hi, thank you so much for patiently waiting. So there you go. I have good news. Um, I have successfully reopened the case and closed it in your favor. You should also receive an email about this. Uh, full refund of $1,220.40 will go back to your card. And uh, it might take three to five business days up to one billing cycle to reflect. And I have also um, updated the dispute amount so that it's going to be the full amount, okay? Okay, great. Thank you so, so much. Yes! I think there are two big lessons here. One is that if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. I knew that this was a risk. I knew that it could be a scam, but I went for it anyways. I knew that I was protected by PayPal and Reverb, and both of them were super helpful in getting me a refund and helping me get it figured out. The second lesson is, is that scammers are gonna scam. Whether you're buying things through Reverb or eBay or Facebook or however, there are people out there who are going to try to scam you in one way or another. This to me was pretty impressive actually, the whole, I mean, essentially mail fraud um, saying that they had something delivered to my house and it wasn't. Um, you know, that definitely threw me for a loop and went beyond what I anticipated. I'll also say that a lot of people hate on Reverb and PayPal and eBay for the fees that they charge, but in paying those fees, you get protection. So whether you're buying or selling, those companies will protect your transactions so that if somebody does try to scam you, you can get your money back. That's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Both of those are two easy ways to help the channel. All right, until next time, I'll see you out there.